Snakes are limbless reptiles that are among the most feared animals on the planet. Although their form of locomotion may seem to limit them, they are among the deadliest animals alive. In fact, the big four snakes in the Indian subcontinent kill over 50,000 people per year and maim double that amount. The primary method that these deadly snakes use to harm people is their venom. We will examine the four types of snake venom and show you which of them you will want to avoid the most. And also we will study how some animal managed to evolve and become immune to the deadly venom. Hello and welcome to Knowledge TV Facts. Before we continue, if you like this kind of video, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Venomous snakes use venom to subdue their prey and aid with digestion. Numerous studies in the early 2000s showed that the venom used by elapid and viperid snakes would increase the release of free proteins and help break down cell structures. Snake venom is a complex mixture of different organic compounds, so it's fair to say that its uses may extend beyond killing prey. Also, some snakes have different venoms than others. While the aforementioned studies mentioned elapids and viperids, other types of venomous snakes exist. Their venom may have evolved to kill specific populations, as is the case of the golden lancehead. This relative of the fer de lance has been effectively trapped on Snake Island, a small island located off the coast of Brazil. Since the island isn't home to any mammal populations, their venom has since evolved to be more powerful on avian creatures. The four types of snake venom are proteolytic venom, hemotoxic venom, neurotoxic venom, and cytotoxic venom. However, proteolytic venom is often left off the list since it is present in all snake bites. We will take a closer look at each type and show you why these venoms are considered so deadly. Proteolytic venom consists of proteolytic enzymes found in all venomous snakes that cause the degradation of tissue structures. Specifically, the venom acts at the site of the envenomation, and that's part of the reason that humans see such dramatic changes where the bite occurs. The venom breaks down blood vessel walls along with muscle tissue, accelerating the death of the prey and potentially helping with digestion. Large amounts of proteolytic venom are found in rattlesnakes and other pit vipers, working with their hemotoxic venom to inflict devastating wounds. Hemotoxic venom destroys the red blood cells in the body of an afflicted person while also impacting tissues and organs. People injected with hemotoxic venom will know right away in most cases. The venom breaks down cells and tissue around the injection site, leading to tremendous pain. This venom can also cause blood clotting or even prevent blood clotting, either situation can be deadly. The results of this venom in humans include cardiovascular failure, loss of an affected limb, and massive internal bleeding. Hemotoxic venom works slower than other types of snake venom, though. That means a person can often survive with proper medical attention. Rattlesnakes, Russell's viper, and copperheads are all snakes with hemotoxic venom. Neurotoxic venom. Snakes that inject neurotoxic venom impact animals' nervous systems causing muscle paralysis, damage to the brain, and loss of consciousness. This sort of venom hinders the nerve impulses around parts of the body, acting very quickly in some cases. Unlike hemotoxic venom, neurotoxic varieties can be delivered without a lot of pain. In fact, some people do not realize that they have been bitten until they begin feeling symptoms. Black mamba venom can have noticeable symptoms in as few as 15 minutes and can render a human unconscious in less than an hour. Without treatment, which is hard to receive if one suddenly collapses, neurotoxic venom is often fatal. Cytotoxic venom as the name suggests, cytotoxic venom kills cells. This type of venom is often found in cobras and other elapids. This venom is not as deadly as hemotoxic or neurotoxic venom. However, secondary injuries such as loss of limb function and other disabilities often stem from cytotoxic venom. This venom is known to severely damage skin and underlying tissues, often leading to disabilities in the victim. Even if they survive the initial bite, these complications can leave the individual hindered for life. Generally speaking, snakes can inject two or more types of snake venom into their foes. As mentioned before, proteolytic venom is found in all venomous snake venom. That means snake bites introduce at least two types of venom into a person. Some snakes have a potent venom cocktail that has multiple sources of damage. For example, Jameson's mamba has neurotoxins and hemotoxins present in its venom, allowing the snake to kill in as little as 30 minutes. 
The more complex the venom, the harder it is to mitigate all the damage it can do. Of all the types of snake venom, neurotoxic venom is the deadliest snake venom and the one that most people will want to avoid. Depending on the amount of venom injected into a person and the victim's health, this venom can kill in 30 minutes or a few hours. Many neurotoxins are fatal without treatment. For example, the black mamba has a 100% fatality rate without treatment, making it the deadliest snake in the world. That doesn't mean the other snake venoms are easy to deal with. Based on the immense pain that accompanies cytotoxic venom, most people will think that's the worst one. Meanwhile, the necrosis that accompanies hemotoxic venom is enough to make people warier of that one. There is no good snake venom to be injected with. Snake attacks are common in the world today. Modern medicine is helping the situation, but many people are still losing life and limb to these creatures. More research and increased cautiousness are required to save people in the future. However there are creatures evolved and became immune to a deadly venom. And some of them are the following. Honey badgers, also known as radles, are related to skunks, otters, ferrets, and other badgers. These voracious omnivores get their name from their fondness for feeding on honey and honeybee larvae. They also eat insects, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, as well as roots, bulbs, berries, and fruits. Though they hunt for their own food most of the time, they'll happily steal from other carnivores or scavenge the kills of bigger animals when the opportunity arises. Their prominent, sharp teeth, long foreclaws, and stocky build allow them to easily rip meat from bone. Honey badgers can be found throughout most of Sub-Saharan Africa, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Western Asia. They can adapt to a variety of conditions, from warm rain forests to cool mountains. Their home ranges can be as vast as about 193 square miles, or 500 square kilometers. Most honey badgers are active throughout the day, though near human settlements they may prefer the cover of darkness. They are often seen alone, though it's not uncommon to spot mating pairs. Honey badgers mate all year and often have just one cub at a time. When at turning rock crevices and hollow trees into shelters, honey badgers will also make homes in the abandoned dens of other animals like porcupines and yellow mongooses. The honey badger has a fairly long body, but is distinctly thick-set and broad across the back. Its skin is remarkably loose, and allows the animal to turn and twist freely within it. The skin around the neck is 6 mm thick, an adaptation to fighting conspecifics. The head is small and flat, with a short muzzle. The eyes are small, and the ears are little more than ridges on the skin, another possible adaptation to avoiding damage while fighting. The honey badger has short and sturdy legs, with five toes on each foot. The feet are armed with very strong claws, which are short on the hind legs and remarkably long on the forelegs. It is a partially plantigrade animal whose soles are thickly padded and naked up to the wrists. The tail is short and is covered in long hairs, save for below the base. Honey badgers are the largest terrestrial mustelid in Africa. Adults measure 23 to 28 centimeters in shoulder height and 55 to 77 centimeters in body length, with the tail adding another 12 to 30 centimeters. Females are smaller than males. In Africa, males weigh 9 to 16 kilograms while females weigh 5 to 10 kilograms or 11 to 22 pounds on average. The mean weight of adult honey badgers from different areas has been reported at anywhere between 6.4 to 12 kilograms, with a median of roughly 9 kilograms, for various studies. This positions it as the third largest known badger, after the European badger and hog badger, and fourth largest extant terrestrial mustelid after additionally the wolverine. However, the average weight of three wild females from Iraq was reported as 18 kilograms or 40 pounds, about the typical weight of male wolverines or male European badgers in late autumn, indicating that they can attain much larger than typical sizes in favorable conditions. However, an adult female and two males in India were relatively small, at the respective weights of 6.4 kilograms or 14 pounds and a median of 8.4 kilograms skull length is 13.9 to 14.5 centimeters in males and 13 centimeters for females. There are two pairs of mammoth. The honey badger possesses an anal pouch which, unusual among mustelid, is eversible, a trait shared with hyenas and mongooses. The smell of the pouch is reportedly, suffocating, and may assist in calming bees when raiding beehives. 
The skull bears little similarity to that of the European badger, and greatly resembles a larger version of that of a marbled polecat. The skull is very solidly built, with that of adults having no trace of an independent bone structure. The brain case is broader than that of dogs. Convergent evolution of venom-targeted nicotinic acetylcholine receptors in mammals that survive venomous snake bites. Honey badgers prey upon and survive bites from venomous snakes, but the molecular basis of their venom resistance is unknown. The muscular nicotinic cholinergic receptor, targeted by snake alpha neurotoxins, has evolved in some venom-resistant mammals to no longer bind these toxins. Through phylogenetic analysis of mammalian sequences, we show that honey badgers, hedgehogs, and pigs have independently acquired functionally equivalent amino acid replacements in the toxin-binding site of this receptor. These convergent amino acid changes impede toxin binding by introducing a positively charged amino acid in place of an uncharged aromatic residue. In venom-resistant mongooses, different replacements at these same sites are glycosylated, which is thought to disrupt binding through steric effects. Thus, it appears that resistance to snake venom alpha neurotoxin has evolved at least four times among mammals through two distinct biochemical mechanisms operating at the same sites on the same receptor. According to scientists, though honey badgers are widespread and considered abundant, they are hunted or persecuted in certain regions, especially when they come into conflict with farmers and beekeepers. They're also eaten as bushmeat and harvested for the traditional medicine trade. A reputation for bravery and tenacity make honey badgers popular for traditional medicine. Another animal that is known immune to venom is the mongoose. A mongoose is a small terrestrial carnivorous mammal belonging to the family Herpestidae. This family is currently split into two subfamilies, the Herpestinae and the Mongodinae. The Herpestinae comprises 23 living species that are native to southern Europe, Africa and Asia, whereas the Mongodinae comprises 11 species native to Africa. The Herpestidae originated about 21.8 plus or minus 3.6 million years ago in the early Miocene and genetically diverged into two main genetic lineages between 19.1 and 18.5 plus or minus 3.5 million years ago. Mongooses have long faces and bodies, small, rounded ears, short legs, and long, tapering tails. Most are brindled or grizzly, a few have strongly marked coats which bear a striking resemblance to mustelid. Their non-retractal claws are used primarily for digging. Mongooses, much like goats, have narrow, ovular pupils. Most species have a large anal scent gland, used for territorial marking and signaling reproductive status. They range from 24 to 58 centimeters in head to body length, excluding the tail. In weight, they range from 320 grams to 5 kilograms. Mongooses are one of at least four known mammalian taxa with mutations in the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that protect against snake venom. Their modified receptors prevent the snake venom alpha neurotoxin from binding. These represent four separate, independent mutations. In the mongoose, this change is effected, uniquely, by glycosylation. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button.